what is up everyone welcome back to the channel and uh welcome to my studio my home office here and i have a ton of organizing to do with my tackle bag i have so much stuff that i need to organize and i figured what better way to do it than with all of you because i don't know about you but i just love seeing what's in other people's tackle boxes i love seeing the gear they have i love seeing you know new stuff maybe stuff that i've never seen before i just love it like i'm just like a tackle junkie i guess you could say so I'm going to organize all my stuff for the fall slash late fall panfish season here in Massachusetts. I got a ton of stuff. I'm probably going to be out in the kayak tomorrow. I want to downsize my gear because normally I carry a giant ass bag of tackle with like five or six trays, plastic trays full of gear. And when you're out in the yak, you really don't have the space for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my stuff and I'm going to consolidate into maybe, you know, two or three plastic medium sized bins so as you guys know i don't normally fish with live bait so my stuff is lots of jigs lots of plastics lots of uh micro crank baits things like that so i have three or four bins here i'm gonna open them up show you guys what i got share some techniques i use and hopefully you know we can learn something and you guys can share some stuff with me i love to hear you guys in the comments so hit me up definitely i'll get back to as many people as i can mostly everyone i pretty much always make it a point to check every day and get back to you guys i love hearing from you so keep that up let's get started so the first case i have here is just you know regular ozark trail travel case and let's see what i got in here so always 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 slip bobber goes without saying you never know when you're going to find the fish if they're 20 feet down if they're 10 feet down you want to be able to isolate them with the slip float rig so that's going to stay in there. I also have all sorts, and I'm not going to take every piece out because you don't want to see that. I have, for panfish specifically, I have all sorts of little inline spinners. See that little fire tiger pattern there? I have, for crappie, I have some of these micro spins, which work great. You put a little, pair this with a little soft plastic tail at the end of it, that is money right there if they're suspended in the water column i throw these all the time you see it's it's pretty much like a bass spinner but that hook is much much smaller so you can pair that with you know say a little curly tail grub just like that good little bait there and you will catch bass with these also you'll catch yellow perch anything that uh anything that swims will catch will eat a spinner bait i have another one same chartreuse color i have let's see what else i got here cool I have a multi-jointed Rapala, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have. This is the bronze and black. This is an awesome bait any time of year. Trot will hit this. Bass will hit this. Pike will even hit this. I would definitely keep at least one multi-jointed crank in your bag at all times. So that's going to stay. Other than that, I have... Let's find some cool stuff. This is um, sort of a mini search bait. It is pretty heavy. It's a, I think it's a quarter ounce jig head with, you know, soft plastic, pretty, pretty decent size. So this is, I'll use this when I'm targeting trout deep down, say, you know, mid December, lake's not frozen yet. Got to get 30 feet down. This is a good bait that I usually tie on first to see if I can target those deep fish. Definitely be keeping that in there. What else do I got? I have, this is just a regular spoon. Don't fish these a lot. I probably should. They're good baits. I mean, they look like a fleeing bait fish and they fall, especially in deeper waters. If you just let it sink down, it sort of wobbles down to the where you want it. Maybe I'll try this tomorrow. Maybe I'll, you know, give it a shot. I don't normally fish those. I like to keep them on me at all times just in case. This one is cool. I actually picked this bait up at Walmart the other day for a dollar. And this is just a tiny micro crankbait this thing is so small and i i threw it out there the other day and the action was not very good at all which i know shocking i spent a dollar on it not going to be the best uh sort of thing there but the action wasn't great at all i'm probably gonna, not going to use this it's very cheaply made i'm going to keep it in for now but i have a hard time believing i'm going to throw that anytime soon uh, let's see what else i got here I have some just regular generic Berkeley floating trout worms. Can't go wrong with these. And oh, this is cool. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. This right here 
is a floating jig head. These things are awesome, right? So a lot of guys, when they trout fish, they'll do like the inflated crawler. They'll, you know, inflate a crawler with air so it floats off the bottom. This is the same idea, except you don't need that air, the worm inflator. You just rig it as you would like a Carolina rig for trout, but you put on one of these instead of a hook. And this floats like this does a really good job. It's it's hollow and it floats and it holds the bait up horizontally. And I've caught a ton of bass, uh, believe it or not, with this method. Nightcrawler, and I, as I said, I don't normally fish with live bait, but you can put like these here, Berkeley gulp, two and a half inch minnows. If you pair that with this jig head and just twitch it every so often, you'll catch fish. Like these things are awesome to have. Highly recommend picking them up. I'll leave the link to Amazon down there in the bottom of the video so you can see that. I have, let's see, a ton of different trout mag magnets. I keep these in all the time. You know, th that's one of my the baits that I normally fish pretty much year round. I got some jigs in here too, but I, let's see if I can find one. Yeah. So here's the uh, pink, if it's going to focus. Pink trout magnet jig head, 164th ounce. These paired with like a white, if I can rig that up for you real quick. That's panfish candy right there. That stuff will catch tons of panfish. So I'll keep a ton of those in there. I mean, if I'm going for trout, I'll have all sorts of, you know, dough baits that I'm not going to show you because you guys have seen those. I have the mice tails, power bait mice tails, which is pretty much a power egg with a worm at the end of it. Great river baits. Don't normally fish a lot of them in, in lakes and ponds, but I assume, I mean, you can. I don't normally. And then I have a ton of just random jigs, random jig heads. This one right here is the classic Roadrunner. You know, it's got the little underspin. And this is not a great, I mean, this is fine, but you can put pretty much any soft plastic on there, rig it up as you will. Crappie will hit this. Perch will hit this. Might be a little big for bluegill, but I'll, I'll keep those on me at all times too. There, I mean, you never know when it can go wrong. Then I have a couple, this is a Mr. Crappie micro crankbait. I think it dives like five to six feet. Interesting pattern. Doesn't really match the hatch of anything I fish for, but it does catch fish. And then I have just another shad pattern. Micro crankbait, again, Honestly, when the bass bite is tough, sometimes you want to downsize and throw one of these on, you'll catch fish. Or if you have a bunch of aggressive panfish, cannot hurt to try that. So that's pretty much what I got in this box. I mean, I also have like some, you know, some weights and some hooks, but you guys don't care about any of that stuff. That's it for all like the cool stuff in that one. Let's see what else I got in the next one. And then I have another box here. Again... Whoa, that lighting's bad. Just a couple more panfish items I'm going to show you. And a lot of the stuff I got in Mystery Tackle Box. This is a cool little design. Again, a deeper diving crankbait. And again, I mean, you want to, you, when you get out in the water, you don't know where the fish are going to be. So you want to have all sorts of gear. You want to have stuff for the bottom. You want to have stuff for the top. You want to have stuff that's the middle of the water column. As I'm all tangled up here. So... Again, I have another, this is uh, black and blue, deeper diving crankbait, sinking crankbait. Again, you want to have a bunch of these. Again, if you're in really stained water, here is Fire Tiger from Carl's Bait and Tackle. Very good action on this. It's got a rattle inside of it. And then if you're looking for those really finicky trout fish, I'd like to tie on one of these. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's got a single barbless hook on it. Well, two single barbless hooks, pink, floating action. Trout love this. I, I fish this in shallow streams, and I catch a ton of brook trout with this when they're in there. And, you know, I got a bunch of different, as they're all hooked together here, cast masters. Again, not the biggest fan of cast masters. I, to me, I, I don't like fishing them because the ponds I fish in, they have a ton of snags and a ton of weeds, and I just find it really bothersome to fish those same with this bait here this is a blade bait 
really good in open water. If you're dealing with the water that's clean and not very weedy, this is this is great bait to use. If you're dealing with like Snag City, like sticks and crap all over the ground, I would not recommend that at all. Uh, but good effective bait during the summer, most mostly when I use it. I got some of these. These are just little tiny crappy jigs. They almost look like what you'd use for like a sabiki rig, like for mackerel. They're hard. They're, they don't have great action, but they do. Sh they have like little fluorescent, fluorescent tubes in it, so they shine. They pick up a ton of light. So that's that's always good to have. I have a little teaser here. Again, nothing crazy. Just a little spoon teaser, single hook. Sometimes simpler is the way to go. I mean, you cannot go wrong with any of that stuff there. Let me show. Actually, this is something you wouldn't normally find in a panfish box, but I'm going to show you why I use it. Okay, this is a Guggen Squad Rattling Ned. All right, and you guys might think I'm crazy, but I have caught so many brown trout with Ned rigs. I, I don't know what it is. I've caught them with Senkos. Ned rigs seem to work for brown trout for some reason. And I always keep one on me because I, when the bite's tough, sometimes I'll throw one on. And like, I've been at the at a lake before and I've seen people catching, you know, rainbows on Ned rigs. It's the craziest thing, but I mean, it does look like a worm. It looks like a little bait fish and it sits up like that and hungry trout will eat it. So definitely keep one of those on you. And this, let's see if I got anything else interesting. A couple bob, I mean, bobbers. Yeah, you don't care about that. Let's see what else I got. I forget what this is called. It's a Berkeley power bait. I want to say it's like a mayfly or something. This thing on a jig head catches tons of fish. So I keep a bunch of those in there. And again, if I can find the name of it, I'll put it in there. I got Panther Martin and all sorts of sizes here. I'm all tangled up in here. This is this is why I'm, I'm organizing here. I got like a drop shot rig. Okay. You know, your regular, you know, all you trout guys know, trout guys and gals know that that's a money bait right there for trout. I don't have to explain that one. And let's see, for... That's pretty much it for that box. Let's see what else I got here. I think some of these are my bass boxes, which I'm not going to go through because I'm not going to fish for bass this much. Yeah, let's pass on that box. That's just like a lot of terminal tackle and crap that I don't really need right now. And lastly, this is, you might think it's psychotic, all right? These are all my soft plastics. And they're all color-coded, organized by color. Why? Because crappie like different colors on different days and you can't get inside their heads to know, so you gotta try everything. When the bite's tough, I'll switch colors all day long until I find a color they like. And when you find that color, the bite is usually pretty hot for a while. So when I crappie fish, my two colors to go to are pink and chartreuse. Okay. And mostly a combination of both of those. Like this here, I think this is called electric chicken. This little shad on a jig head. You cannot beat it when the bite is on, okay? I got that. I got, let's see if I can find the ones that I, yeah. This one right here is my all-time favorite soft plastic for a jig. This is pink with a chartreuse and glittery tail. This thing is crappie candy, like legit. Like, you've seen my videos. I'll link it down below. There is a video I have where I just, I was retying my jig. I put it in the water, and all of a sudden, I pick up my rod, and I got a 14 inch crappie on it. Like cra these things just slay crappie. This is a Mr. Crappie, uh, you know, curly tail grub. Then I got all sorts of like, this is a, I believe it's called a dock runner. This has two, two tails there. It almost looks like a little frog that I guess you're supposed to skip it under docks for crappie, but I have just as much luck, you know, just throwing it out there on a float and jigging it. It definitely works. I have all sorts of tube baits. Again, you're noticing a theme here. I have chartreuse and red. I have pink and chartreuse. Again, it's my favorite color there. I have some pre-tied minnow swim baits. Again, I, I got these somewhere. I don't usually throw these. 
This is a Carl's amazing tack, uh, tackle twin tail grub. So there's two tails that on a jig head has some great action as well. Let's see what else here. I have some really tiny little swim baits, one inch swim baits. That in a jig head is pretty hard to beat when the bite's tough. As I just got hooked by a jig. Uh, let's see, I got, you know, for the lighter water, I have some pink and blacks. Pink and black tubes, two tails. Again, I mean, I got a lot of cool stuff in here, but it's nothing really groundbreaking. Here's a black and pink. So, I mean, the key when crappie fishing is to have all sorts of different colors. Like this is, this is tiny. All sorts of colors, all sorts of sizes, and just throw them out there and just to see what works. Like some days you'll get tons of bites on white and some days you'll get nothing on white. So you got to keep all your options open. You got to try whatever you have in your box and, you know, fish don't make any sense. Okay. Unless it's, you know, a worm, it's really hard to catch panfish on artificial bait, but it's also not that fun to fish live bait for panfish. But that's what I got here. I'm going to do some organizing. I got a little bag here that I like to take out when I go kayaking. So I can't fit a ton in here. I'll definitely, these always stay in my bag, gulp, gulp minnows. So I'm going to put those in there. Oh, this bag stinks. Whew. All right. And it's my fly box. I'm not going to go fly fishing this week. So, but that's another video. Let's see what else I got in here. Power eggs. I'm going to take those out. I'm not going to use those. What else I got here? Crappie nibbles. I'll show you those in a second. One inch gulp minnows. Can't beat those. All right. And these, I don't know if you guys have ever seen these, these crappie nibbles. They're tiny little, they look like trout eggs, but they're tiny. And what you do is you just thread a couple of them on a jig head and it increases the flavor and the attractiveness of the lure and they work. Crappie love them. So I use them. I don't use them all the time. If the bite's tough, I'll throw a couple on there. And let's see what else I got in here. Trout paste. I'm going to take that out. Don't need that. Some bobbers. Again, like you also want to have a bunch of different bobbers. Or crappie nimbles. White crappie nimbles. Okay, I don't need both of those in there. But I fish a lot of weighted floats. But you also want to have other floats that aren't weighted just in case they might... You know, sometimes they're sensitive. So I, I keep a couple just unweighted, regular, generic, cheap bobbers in there at all times because you never know. I mean, also, sometimes you want to be able to cast it longer, so I'll throw a weighted one out there. But I guess it's all personal preference. So that's my bag. I got a lot of work to do here. Uh, I will get going on that, and I'll talk to you in another video. But definitely hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. And let me know if you have any tips for me to try. Talk to you soon.